Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Two international reports were released this week pointing to tougher times ahead for South Africa, Africa and developing economies. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the prognosis. Hi Terence. Hi Tracy. So first of all, the International Mon Monetary Fund has downgraded South Africa. Yes, they've moved our growth forecast for 2015 to 1.4 percent and for 2016 1.3 percent. Now the 1.4 percent I think is very much in line with consensus. It's a major downgrade from where we thought we would be early in the year at around the 2 percent level and the IMF also thought we would be at that, that level when they last put out the World Economic uh, Outlook report. Um, so it is, a, it is a material downgrade but I think it has been coming. I think the view of 1.3 percent for 2016 is a little bit lower and anyone had hoped and a bit of a shock to everyone um, and hopefully we will, won't perform at those, lo those low levels but I think what, what the IMF is showing is that the commodity price impact that uh, is having a, major, it's having a major effect on South Africa and, uh, and the region, any commodity producers and exporters as well as you know the slowdown in China which is a major trading partner for South Africa but also for the continent and uh, then we have this you know, upcoming uh, normalization of the uh, interest rates in the U.S., which is also having an impact, and we really see our currency is all over the place at the moment, I think, in anticipation of, of that change. So uh, uh, we are in a, we caught in this low growth uh, trap at the moment, and uh, it's really, there's a lot of headwinds currently hitting, uh, battering South Africa, and uh, it's going to be a, a, a torrid few years. And the World Bank has also released a more Africa-focused report, which has also warned of social fallout because of South Africa's weakened performance. That's correct. The World Bank released its Africa Pulse, uh, Africa's Pulse uh, report this week, and that gives an insight into sub-Saharan Africa's growth, uh, which they've, they've marked right down uh, for to about 3.7%, 3.8% for 2015 which is quite a, a material change from what, where this uh, continent was, despite South Africa being a slow-growing country for a number of years. Prior to the financial crisis of uh, 2008, the continent was growing at 6.5% plus. So we're seeing that uh, the commodity impact is, having a, 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 a is really biting now across the continent, and for South Africa as well, as, as we mentioned earlier. And the, the fallout across the continent is really, you know, that uh, the, the, the fiscal space that countries once had is no longer there. They're going to do fiscal consolidation. So government spending is, being, is retreating and uh, growth is re retreating in sync with that, along with uh, the fact that uh, the commodity prices and the trade with China is far weaker. So it's a, it's a, a difficult transitionary period that uh, the, the continent is going through. But the World Bank is predicting that uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, not South Africa, will start growing at plus 4% levels from next year. But South Africa's sort of low growth path, this is what we're talking about, that sort of 1.4 or below 1.5% for the next two years is going to have social impacts. Uh, we know that unemployment already on the narrow definition is over 25%, and that's not going to improve in this environment. In fact, we see a lot of the retrenchment notices out in, in a number of sectors, steel and mining being the top of mind ones. And then the, the actual uh, the World Bank's also revised its extreme poverty line to $1.9 a day. And under that line and under the conditions that South Africa is, is in, uh, uh, you know, a good 14% uh, of South Africans, 7 million uh, of our fellow citizens are going to be under that poverty line. Um, so we're in a, in a difficult space and uh, it's going to be, uh, there's the social impacts I think are going to be felt as well as the economic impacts. And given this background, what do you expect the emphasis of Finance Minister Nene's mini budget to be? Well, I think it's all about credibility building. I think that, uh, as I said about other African countries, they've had to enter into a fiscal consolidation phase ahead of maybe some sort of recovery, maybe from next year. Similarly, South Africa um, has to show that its uh, fiscal balances are credible. We've seen rising debt levels. We've seen rising, uh, um, you know, uh, consumption expenditure within the budget. All those are trying. Uh, Finance Minister Nen is going to try is trying to rein in, and has been signalling that we will rein that in. I think he's going to have a tricky balancing act around the fiscal deficit. We've set targets that 
uh, look like they could be s slipping, you know, t tax revenues, although per private uh, personal tax revenues are, are fairly strong. Um, the, the co a lot of companies are in distress, so therefore corporate taxes will be under some strain at the moment. So on the revenue side, we're seeing, seeing stress. On the expenditure side, we've had a, a wage settlement that was higher than, than government had hoped for public sector workers, so therefore there's uh, additional money that's going to be spent there. So there's a threat of some slippage around that, uh, that target of the deficit, and it's going to be interesting to see how he communicates any slippage if there is, but, but I think that he'll more want to communicate no slippage and uh, emphasize the headcount freezes and the, the cuts and the reprioritization uh, that government is making during, during this mini budget. And, but what will definitely happen as well is I think uh, Finance Minister Nene will uh, revise downwards the, um, the growth forecast from February, which were over, over around that 2% level. I think it's going to be more in line with what we're seeing the IMF saying maybe even aggressively down below that uh, to be more, I think, in this whole more conservative, more credible vein, I think is going to be the message that we're going to try and express that we, we've got a hand on the teller, that we understand the constraints. And I think he'll be also reaching out to business and calling on uh, and to labor and all the social partners calling for partnerships and emphasizing the need to continue uh, in partnership with those elements that will alleviate some of the structural comp constraints, especially around infrastructure, carry on with infrastructure spending, because we know electricity is a major constraint and we need to get that, that right. But also in, in the transport um, uh, environment and in the water environment, we need to continue with that. And, you know, I think just uh, also emphasizing the nine point plan, which is really a partnership plan to rebuild investment confidence and business confidence, which is extremely low. We saw the figure come out at a 22 year low this week. So we're in a, a very difficult environment in terms of investor confidence. And I think he'll be wanting to give a, be a credible voice, be a balanced voice, but also to, to, pr to provide some stimulus for that partnership so that we can try and break out of this low growth environment. Thanks, Terence. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.